Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Bench's YouTube channel. It's been a little while now since I made a film on YouTube. I think it was entitled, um, You've Been Making Rings The Wrong Way. Um, it caused um, a lot of bit of commotion, and there were lots of comments left saying, um, great, that's the way I've always been taught. Who are you to say you've been making rings the wrong way? And I know it was a title that got a lot of attention. Um, but I did get a lot of comments asking, well, that technique that you've just shown us is great for narrow pieces of wire. What happens if the wire that you're making up rings with is a lot wider? the overlapping, the one on top of the other, really won't work because when you cut through the two, the ends really won't be parallel and you're back to the, the problem of having to file the ends flat again. Well, I'm just gonna do a very, very quick film to show you one method that you can get around this if you are using wire. Yes, the technique was great for perhaps three or four millimeters maximum wire, but if it went wider than that, the ends won't come together absolutely parallel. So I've got a really wide piece of silver here What's went? Well, this is uh, duh, 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 duh. you're in the region of oh, my glasses on my head. So there we go, it's six millimeters in width. So this is going to be an ideal way of showing you the way that uh, I showed you earlier on YouTube. And perhaps I'll link it if I remember up above my head here. If I forget, it'll definitely be down in the comment section down below. So let me just quickly show you now what I'm going to do. Now, the idea was. Uh, just to recap in case you haven't watched that film already and if you haven't, why haven't you? But the idea is, is that I, I don't like the way where rings are made and, and the ends come together straight like this. That to me is a no-no. I'm not going to get into it, but the ends come together straight. But what people do is actually measure the length of a piece of, of metal. They will cut it, then they will bring the ends together, and then they'll have to file it to make the ends nice and parallel. The way I showed that you don't cut the piece to length straight away, you just mark off where you want that piece of metal cut, then you bend it around so the ring comes nicely around, and then you cut through the joint once the ring has been made round, and the way you cut it ensures that those ends come together nice and parallel. So you don't have to file it, there's no faffing around, there's no cutting through the joint, because every time you cut through the joint or file the end, you're making that bit of metal shorter and shorter and shorter, and then the ring won't end up the right size. I've got my ring blank table again. Always, always reference this. And we use that now to measure the length of the blank that we need, depending upon the thickness of the metal. Two millimeters thick, we can use our table. You can get this on our online training website at the bench, that's at the bench.com. Simply register as a free view. In the top section then there's a little um, title in the nav bar, click on the resources section and you can download this, not a problem. Laminate it, put it by the side of your bench, you will refer to this so many times, it's absolutely unbelievable. But what we can do with this is get our two millimeter on the top here, this is our thickness, come down for the two millimeter and then we just simply work out then what finger size we want to make, come across and then you know exactly what length that blank has to be. So let's quickly do this now for you. We're going to measure out the blank. So you will always come in from one end. And I know people have been saying, well, that's a lot of wastage. It's okay for Andrew Berry. He can afford to have all this wastage. I totally agree with you. But these little bits of metal are never wasted. With silver, you can always use your silver for whatever you want to use it for, little embellishments, melting down. Uh, you can do, it, do the same with gold as well. Perhaps I would be perhaps a little bit more economical with gold. And with platinum, perhaps I wouldn't necessarily use this particular technique of moving in sort of five or six millimeters from the one edge, because yes, there is quite a bit of wastage, but it is not wastage because the metal that you cut off is never ever wasted. And to me, I would rather have a lovely, perfect solder joint with a minimum of stress built into it than, and have a little bit of wastage than just having rings that perhaps may crack that aren't quite round when you make it and so forth. Anyway, all right, let's just measure out this length of, here we go, measure out this ring blank and I'll quickly show you what I mean. 
I'm going to mark off this to 60 millimeters. Again, you can see on the ends, we're going to come close to the end, okay, just to appease a lot of people. Um, so 60, we come right across to here. So that there is our 60. So that's the length that we are going to need. Again, we don't cut, we bend this around first of all. And again, we're going to make this round, round as possible before we do anything with it. If you've got a nice um, shank bender, uh, use that. But I've got a pair of half round pliers. We're going to bend it. We've bent the first half. We're going to come around to the other half. We're going to carry on bending that around. If you can't do this with a pair of half rounds, just tap it upon the mandrel, but make sure that you do bend both ends first and then you bend the rest of the ring. Just makes your life a lot, lot easier. So when it comes around now, whereas in the previous film I had the ends overlapping sideways, this time we're going to put one on top of the other. So we're going to bend one end over the top of the other piece. So we're going to just quickly locate our marks. There's our mark there. And we're going to bring the mark out to the outside edge of where we've got that. So I can see it when we overlap the ends. So we're going to bend this around and make sure that the bottom curve you've got here is matching the top curve right around. And we're going to make sure that if you want to cut this through in one go, that the two lines you need to cut through are going to be uh, directly one above the other. Further. Okay, so there, just one directly above the other. And now we can cut through both pieces at the same time. Obviously I have made sure that they are directly one above the other. So in this instance, yes, I have a little bit of waste, but as you can see, it's the most tiniest, tiniest little pieces. And now those ends are going to be beautiful and parallel, and then we just need to just maneuver them into place with our half rounds. Come together like that, and now our ends are absolutely beautiful. And parallel and on the inside absolutely gorgeous as well so even though the wire is a lot thicker we can still ensure that we get the most beautiful and I, and I really do go on about this the, the secret to the most perfect solder joints is the tightest of joints the most parallel of joints with no gaps through it as you can see, I have not needed to file the ends of that wire. You can do this technique, as I said, with thinner wire. You can have the ends overlapping one above the other or have them one on top of the other. And that is the way that I would make these rings. In this method only, um, the ends come together absolutely beautifully. They're already starting to curve. They're not straight because as soon as you start to bend, you are going to put stress on that solder joint. And there is no doubt about that. But you make the ends coming around. So they're coming around into that lovely curve to start off with. There's less stress upon the joint. And personally speaking, I think the joint will last you a lot longer. And also the ring will be a lot better. And I know people are saying, well, then you have to, you do have to hammer the ring to make it work hard and so it doesn't squash. Yes, I totally agree with you. But the least amount of stress you need to put on that joint, the better. So that is how we can ensure the ends of our metal 
and nice and flush with simply one saw cut, cutting the ends off using nice wide wire. That will apply to round wire, desection wire, square wire by simply overlapping the ends one above the other. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do love you to click the subscribe button down below. Don't forget, click that little bell icon to be notified when films like this go live on our YouTube channel. If you like this film, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down and put some comments down below. Love to read them. Don't forget the link to you're making rings the wrong way. You've been told how to do it the wrong way in the description. Check out the film and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.